Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And for those of you that are at afar, I wish I could be sending wonderful sun from Los Angeles, but I hope you can actually hear the rain that's going to let us all have beautiful green grasses and wonderful things going outside in Los Angeles. So I am sending some sun and some rain for beautiful Los Angeles, and I thank you for joining me. My name is Nikki, and I'm a certified yoga teacher. I am very excited to be doing this class with you. One thing that you should know about me before we get started, as you can maybe see around me, I have lots of crystals, stones, shells, every sort of mineral that comes from the earth. So I'm going to give you a second, just a, a minute, if you want to press pause and go and grab any sort of shell, mineral, crystal, anything you have in your house, if you have, happen to have something, something that really means a lot to you. And maybe you can just place it right on the mat for our practice today. So I'm just going to let you do that. And we can just all take a few deep breaths as we start to realize that by doing this, we're actually bringing a special part of ourselves onto our mat. And as we start to do this, and as we maybe start to close the eyes and not even force them close, and I'll shut my own eyes with you, we'll all do this together. You can either place that sacred object, object, stone, crystal, whatever it is, right on the mat, feel the good energy coming up. Or maybe you can place it in your hand. You can even have more than one thing. And then you can just start to become aware of what this thing, this special object feels like on your mat or in your hand. And maybe you can start to focus all of your energy, all of your attention to one single thing. Maybe you can even start to set an intention for your practice by focusing your energy. You can start to take a few really deep inhales and exhales. And what you're doing is you're fueling the body. Pranayama, vital life force energy coming in and out. Just making your mat, your sacred space, all your own so we can enjoy this journey together. Maybe you can start to sit up a little taller, feel a little prouder, let your heart shine a little brighter. Feel the warmth that actually comes from the inside, from your body, from your heart and then beats to all of the extremities of your body with every breath and every heartbeat. Maybe you can start to connect the two things and come into your own rhythm. A few deep breaths right here. And if it's hard for you to let the external forces fade away, things that have already happened to you today or this week or this year. Maybe you can just start to take a nice deep inhale knowing that these things no longer serve you. And on your strong releasing exhale, you can let just one thing at a time go. Let the sound of the healing singing bowl enter your body, your breath, your heartbeat. Let the sound envelop all of your being. See where it takes you, your breath work. Start to elongate and know that maybe we only have a certain amount of breaths in this lifetime. We can make them count. We can make them last longer, savor them, sip in a little bit more on the top of your next inhale. Savor your breath and your life. And let go of one more thing on the exhale. With eyes still closed and focusing all of the attention on yourself, on your breath. Maybe with 
something in your hand or not, just take your healing hands up to your heart center, maybe palms down at first, right over your heart. Tuck the chin into the chest, bow your head in, and just feel your heartbeat connect all of your energy. Feel your healing hands on your heart and know that it spreads from here. Lead with your heart. Let your mind follow. Enjoy breaths at your heart center. Your head fall all the way back, eyes still closed. Stretch out the front of your throat, your communication center, your throat chakra. Subtle areas of the body all need attention. Breathe it in, straight into the throat, all the way down to the heart. And on your exhale, gently bring your head all the way back forward. Bow your chin in one more time. And if you haven't yet done so, really focus on an intention for your practice today. What brought you to your mat? Knowing that you already set one of the most intention, one of the most important intentions by choosing to do your practice today. See how it affects you and all of those around you. Deep breath in. Let your crown reach to the sky. Let your thumbs move in towards the heart, Anjali Mudra, prayer position. And we'll start a very strong heart opening pranayama so you can gently open the eyes so you can see what we're doing now. Just let them float open. Let them adjust to whatever you see in front of you. And take a really deep breath in, reaching all the way through the crown of the head, let your heart shine. And on your exhale, dive your fingertips forward, round your back, first bit of movement. Inhale, spread your wings, open your heart wide, big, deep breath, let your head fall back. Exhale, bring it back forward, round your back. And inhale, hands back to your heart center, sit up nice and tall. We'll go two more times. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, dive the fingertips forward, round the back. Inhale, spread your wings, open your heart. Exhale, bring it back forward. Inhale, hands to heart, sit up nice and tall. We go again. Exhale, dive it forward. Inhale, open your heart with a smile. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, hands to heart, sit up nice and tall. Feel proud, feel alive, feel happy and healthy. Exhale, release what no longer serves you. Take your healing hands down to your legs, give them a nice little rub. Drop any crystals, shells, minerals, anything you have onto the mat. And then just give it all a little rub. You can rock from side to side. Just get into the body a little bit. If you have something that's really sore today, something that just happens to be hurting, whatever it is for you, a knee or an ankle, a shoulder, maybe just rub your hands together. Get a little bit of warmth, a little bit of attention. Know that you're putting your intention, your healing energy into something important, yourself. And then take your hands to wherever they need to be, a shoulder, a knee. Maybe you can even massage your feet, get them out from under you a little bit. And if you have nowhere for your hands to be, bring them right back up to your heart and know that all the healing starts from here. Take a few de deep breaths. Give yourself the love and intention that you deserve. 
and we'll start moving even more. So just because we've been sitting for a little bit, let's go ahead and uncross the legs and just make sure that the hips feel okay. If this was too long to be sitting for you, make sure that you move before you get really stiff. So just get really comfortable. And if you happen to be sitting on a bolster or a cushion, anything, you can move it right out of the way. And then we'll come over onto hands and knees. So this is really when you want to start a nice strong foundation for your practice. Wherever you are in your practice, whether you're a beginner, have never really even made it to your mat that many times, or if you can't count the amount of times, really focus on your foundation. And what does that mean? Spread all 10 fingers nice and wide so it feels like your pinkies and your thumbs are coming away from each other. And then those fingers spread wide, make sure that they're underneath your shoulders so you feel that stability in your upper body. Squeeze your belly in, you can corset your belly button to your spine, know that your whole core body is the front and back body, feel it tighten. And then make sure that your feet are flat, laces side down, and that you feel your knees are right under your hips and that strong foundation as well. So just take a few deep breaths here, right? on all four limbs, hands, knees, feet rooted. And maybe you can just start to feel your energy melting down to the earth as the earth is actually kind of pushing away from you in the opposite direction. Feel the yin and the yang, the polarity. Feel the balance. And then if you feel good here, start to follow along and bring the right toes back behind you. So now you're balancing on three limbs. Feels a little bit different. You might move over more to the left. See if you can square it all at, off. Same foundation of where we were with all four limbs on the earth. And if you feel good here, maybe take the left fingertips on the opposite side of the body and balance even stronger. When you're here, find three deep inhales and exhales. So not holding your breath, really lengthening all the way from fingers to toes, making sure to squeeze your ab, find one more full round, inhale, and on the exhale, gracefully let it come back down to the earth. Make sure you feel that foundation on all four limbs again, and then when you feel good, if you want to, bring the left toes back behind you. You balance on opposite sides. If this feels good, right fingertips follow. Squeeze your abs, make your body feel alive. Find two more strong rounds of breathing, lengthening, strengthening, and balancing. All these things going on. Inhale, and on the exhale, release it down nice and strong. Beautiful. So now you know how strong you are. You can balance on both sides, all four limbs back on the earth. Let's just enjoy some cat cows. Really nice hatha practice here. Starting to move the body with the breath. And you can inhale and offer the heart forward, tilt the head up, look towards the skies. And then reverse the motion by pressing through the earth on the exhale. Really feel that mat underneath you. And you can just move a few more times with your breath. And this is really a good time where you can focus that attention back on the breathing. Sometimes when we start the moving practice, we lose the breath, but really keep it going. And then as it feels good, maybe you can start to circle the torso in all sorts of directions. You can even look over one shoulder, wag your tail in one direction, all the way over in the opposite direction. And if you care at all what you look like, if a family member or a loved one happens to be watching, maybe tell them to join in or just close your eyes, put a smile on your face and pretend like you just don't care. Make it feel good. Few more breaths. And as you and your body feels ready, know that you should trust your body more so than my voice. Come back through center, 
and find a delicious child's pose by just stretching your fingertips forward. Let your bum come down onto your heels. Maybe even let your knees come a little bit apart as you let your heart melt down to the earth. Take a good amount of deep breaths here. Find this as your child's pose, devotional pose, reaching your hands forward, your heart melting down to the earth. Any time throughout your practice, if we ever do a movement that feels like it's too much for you or too soon, maybe come down if this seems to be a comfortable pose for you and stretch it all the way out in a child's pose. You can even bring those fingertips back behind you. Give yourself a little child's pose hug. Rock it from side to side to get into your juicy hip areas if that feels good. And if your forehead area happens to be down on the mat, maybe you can really take that rock from side to side. And what you're doing is you're massaging your third eye chakra area now, opening up that chakra area, your willpower, your intuition. Take some deep breaths into this area. Exhale, let it go. And then just to create some gentle movement, like you're playing a big grand piano with your fingertips, reach it over to the right side of your body so you're stretching out the side body. Reach your fingertips all the way over so they're even coming off the mat. Take long, deep breaths. You can bring your left side hip to the opposite left side of the mat. And then like you're playing a big piano again all the way through center to the left side. Bring your hips over to the right. Stretch it out. Breathe deeply. Should feel really good. And bringing it back through center as you're ready. And let's engage the body by spreading the fingertips wide, reaching forward, and then tucking the toes, straightening out the legs, coming up with the hips high and heels low to find the first downward facing dog of our practice. So this is a total body workout here. It's also a resting pose. Ah, take some deep breaths here and just start to work out your body so you can bend and straighten one leg and then the other. Ah, reaching opposite heel down to the earth. Ah, you can even bend opposite arms into the elbows, getting down into the shoulder areas. And if this pose is ever too much for you and you want to break, your knees are there for you, child's pose is there for you, you have options all over the place. Take it at your own pace. A few more deep breaths here, working it out, and then trying to find the stillness of your pose. So when you find it, breathe into it. Press the mat away with your fingertips spread wide, finding that foundation that we talked about in the beginning of class. And really engaging in the breathing as you start to ride your breath like a wave. We're going to come all the way over into a strong plank position. So just ride that breath. Find the foundation and plank. And again, if you need to use your knees, they're always there for you. So hold for three strong, deep breaths right here. Use your knees if you need to. Engage your core front and back body. Two more big breaths. And then if you wish, stay right here for two more breaths or go with me through the balance exercise, right toes off the mat. Just one round of breathing. On the exhale, drop them down. Inhale, left toes up, just if you wish. Exhale, drop it down. Let's give ourselves a break. Drop to the knees and back to child's pose. Just one big breath. 
Exhale, let it go. And let's keep warming up the body. So we're going to go again. Looking forward, reach the fingertips wide, tuck the toes, find downward facing dog. Maybe you can come right into the comfort of it in a few deep breaths. <sighs> that beautiful Los Angeles rain is just beating on our roof here. I'm glad we're inside a studio. It just sounds so nice. On the inhale, with your breath, with the rain, with everything you've got, look forward, come forward, ride your breath. Hold for just one deep breath here. Inhale. So on the exhale, you can bend those elbows nice and close into the body and ride your breath all the way down onto your belly. We're going to find a sphinx pose. So bring the elbows out in front of the body, palms down. And we're going to inhale up into Sphinx. Offer your heart forward. Nice mini back bend here. If this is ever too intense, just bring it down a little bit. Nice. So elbows just a little bit in front of the body, really offering the heart up. And on the exhale, releasing it down, finding a little bit more intense of a back bend in a baby cobra. Hands right around your rib cage now. Squeeze the elbows into your body. Hover the hands above the earth if you can and still bring that heart forward. Really squeeze through the shoulders, elbows in together. Feel that energy moving forward and exhale release it coming down tuck your toes use your knees if you need to and then come right up through a high plank and all the way back downward facing dog and your down dog you want your hands and shoulders width distance apart and your feet hips width distance apart heels moving down towards the earth and on your next inhale, you're going to start to walk your hands back nice and gently. So you're moving towards your feet and a forward fold all the way at the back of your mat. So if you have really tight hamstrings, maybe bring your feet all the way out towards the outer edges of your mat for this for first forward fold. And if you're a little bit more loose and you have some practice, maybe you can bring your big toes all the way in together and fold all the way down. Just like the first down dog, let's make this forward fold feel really good. So you can clasp onto opposite elbows. You can let the whole body hang forward. You can gently rock from side to side. Really do whatever it is that feels good on your body. Just not any jerk emotions that will really be harsh on the body. Make it feel good. Let the head hang. Nice. Two more breaths. And while all this is going on in the body, see if you can take any energy out of the toes. So maybe lift the toes, wiggle them, spread them wide, put them back down. And feel the energy through all four corners of the feet rooting down like you were a tree growing branches into the earth. Feel the roots growing. Let the fingertips dangle as much as possible. And on a strong inhale, like you're stacking each vertebrae on top of the other, let's roll up and start to salute our sun. Rolling up nice and slow on the first pass. Vertebrae stacking on top of vertebrae. Head, neck, and shoulders is heavy until the last moment when the fingers feel light as feathers sweeping to the side, up to the sky, connecting the palms and the energy above you and physically feeling it as you pull it right down to your heart center. Holding here, or maybe even closing the eyes and just taking some deep breaths, just standing. Realizing that with two feet on the ground, crown rising, this is not always the easiest thing. Just stand, just be. Let 
the eyes flutter open when they're open. Take a deep breath with hands at heart center. And go on the exhale, shake it out. Maybe even move the body around a little bit. Make it feel really good. Any tensions that you still brought onto your mat might still be here. Let them go. Let them go. Nice. Ah. And when you feel really good, like you're ready to salute your son, our son, start by just standing first. So feet planted on the ground. Again, I said standing is not that easy. So let's make it even a little bit more difficult. Let's bring the palms out to the side, broadens through the collarbone. You feel your heart rising, crown rising. Plant your feet, but really pull up on the arches so you're using the outer edges of your feet. You feel the activation in your legs, and then you can tuck your tailbone just slightly under so you're not arching your back, and we tend to do this a lot when we're standing in line at a store or something like that. How about work on just standing? Tuck the tailbone just slightly under. Really use those outer edges of the feet. Broaden through your collarbone. And take two breaths right here, mountain pose, Tadasana. On the inhale, let the fingers be light as feathers, sweep it up. Let the palms touch and then let them part and lead with your heart as we take our dive coming down all the way to the earth. Let the fingers come low. Try to straighten the legs as much as possible, but it's only our second forward fold, so make it feel good. And then we're going to work on the half bend, so hands either to the earth or maybe up to your shins as you offer your heart forward. Nice half bend. You're reaching from your tailbone all the way through the crown of your head, so tuck your chin. Feel the elongation, really nice flat back. And then exhale, let it all melt down. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, heart comes forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, let it go one more time. Inhale, heart halfway up, really reach it. And exhale, let it melt. Feel your feet planted and inhale. Stack your vertebrae, rise to the sky, use your breath. Feel the energy as you connect it above you and exhale, pull it down to the heart center. Let's keep it moving now. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, lead with your heart always coming down. Inhale, heart comes forward with the half bend. Exhale, we melt it down. And inhale, let's rise to the sky, sweep the fingertips, feel the energy, connect it, and pull it down to your heart center. One more time. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, lead with the heart, let it rise. Exhale, melt it down, and now you're going to start to Walk those hands all the way back up to the top center of the mat until you can find yourself in that strong plank position again. Use your knees if you need to. Find a deep inhale and the exhale. Elbows come in. Really use your strength to ride down. Hold at two inches and hover if you can. And then inhale. Strongly push the heart forward. Find a full up dog if that works on your body or work with the baby cobra, even the sphinx pose, all the same motion of the back bend. Wherever you are, tuck the toes and find your energy moving up and back for downward facing dog. Ha. Take deep breaths. Feel that energy moving, swirling in the body, feeling alive. If you need a break, use your knees, use your child's pose. And if you want even more, let's follow together as the right leg comes high into the sky, nice and strong. On the exhale, let's move it all the way forward between the hands. Use your hand to move that leg up if you need to. And then let's give ourselves a break and drop onto the back left knee 
untuck the toes and if you find some balance here sink those hips down to the earth and a little bit challenging but sweep the fingertips back behind you and offer your heart open to the sky if your hands need to stay to the earth that's fine take one more deep breath and on the exhale release it down place the hands down spread those fingertips always have your foundation and then tuck the back toes so you can straighten the back leg and however you can just step that right leg back and here we are in plank position again deep breath in let's ride that breath down with strength stability and then inhale find your back bend sphinx cobra or the full up dog and then exhale tuck your toes move the energy up and back downward facing two deep breaths right here Feel that energy from the right as compared to the left. You just activated that right side. And on your next inhale, let's complete it on the left. Left toes rise if you can. On the exhale, they come all the way forward. Help that foot forward so you make sure your ankle is directly under your knee to protect that knee and then give the body a break by dropping onto that back right knee. Untuck the toes and just sink the body forward. Two deep breaths right here. And then when you're ready, after your second breath, sweep the fingertips back behind you all the way back so you feel that broadening through the collarbone make sure you're not holding tension in the neck just let it go look up feel proud feel alive feel the energy moving up and also sinking down one more breath and exhale release it down plant those hands feel that stability so you can come up with that straightened back leg use your strength to bring the left leg back nice and strong on the inhale use your exhale to ride it down inhale push and offer your heart forward take the back bend exhale move it back downward facing dog three deep breaths and if in those breaths you want to come down to your knees down to child's pose that is your choice in your practice take it as you will i know how strong you guys are here in the studio and at home so we're going to go one more strong standing series let's take that right foot back up into the sky nice and strong if you have some practice and you want to hold it here for a breath and even put a bend into the knee and drop the right foot over to the left side of your mat, just get a little bit into the hips. Just an option, not a necessity. You could still be in down dog right now. Try to drop that left heel to the earth if you're there inhale use your strength to straighten it back out and on the exhale we're going to bring it all the way forward and actually move into a warrior two position so the right foot comes all the way forward left foot is going to spin flat onto the mat and we cartwheel our arms up and sink down into our right knee try to make that nice and strong on the right side move the right knee towards the right side of your body we're not going to be here too long but one of my absolute favorite poses in this warrior series warrior ones warrior twos warrior threes and all the variations is what we call the peaceful warrior so with your gaze in this pose looking over that front right middle finger like all of your attention was there let's keep it there while we 
flip our palms and be ready to receive all the goodness that this world has to offer. Keep that gaze where it is. Let the left hand just fall down gently on the left leg. Maybe wrap it all the way up and around if you have some practice. And then keep that gaze where it is as you just bring the right arm up and over. Offer your heart open to the sky. Just take one deep breath of peace. You are a peaceful warrior. And on your exhale, let's release it all to the mat. Cartwheel the hands. Step that right leg back. And from here, you can go right back to down dog since we've done a good amount of work or ride through your vinyasa flow. Definitely using that breath, offering your heart and moving it back, downward facing, catching your breath here. Feeling all of that activity swirling in the body. That is energy. Feel it moving. Deep inhales and exhales will just expediate that wonderful feeling all over the body, making happy, healthy, fresh cells. Hmm, one more breath. On the inhale, let the left toes come high into the sky. You can stay in down dog if you wish. If you want to, you can bend the knee, drop it over to the opposite side, open through your hips. See if you can take that breath all the way down to your hip area. Just one more breath. And then use your whole body strength to bring the left leg back up and all the way forward for your warrior. Spinning the right toes flat, Coming and cartwheeling the arms up, sinking down into that left knee. Making sure the knee isn't caving in, swooping it out towards the left side of your mat. Reaching fingertip away from fingertip. Gaze over that front left middle fingertip. And then flip the palms. Receive all the goodness and make sure it's all peaceful. Right hand down, maybe all the way around, left arm up and over. Open your heart to the sky, huge heart opener. Feel the peace and the strength of your warrior. And exhale, release it all. Enjoy the journey as you take the left leg back, straight back to down dog, or through one last vinyasa flow, inhale, offer your heart with a smile, and exhale, move it up and back. Nice job. Let's give ourselves a break down to the knees, all the way back into child's pose. Relax. inhales and exhales filling your whole body up with life and breath pranayama and on your inhale nice and slowly just start to roll right up onto your knees so you're coming sitting in what we call virasana pose hero's pose if this doesn't feel good on your knees, you can come back to any seated position that works for you. But if this feels okay, just hold right here and take your healing hands, just like the beginning of class, give them a little rub, and then take them onto your strong legs. Give them some thanks, some appreciation for all that strong standing series work. Good job. <sighs> making sure everything feels really good as we start to slow down the practice, work our way down to the mat. So from here, just sit up nice and tall. 
and then just move right over onto your seat. We're gonna find one balance as we move our way down to the mat. So make sure that your bum has enough cushion if you even need to roll up your mat a little bit, that works too. And then we're gonna find a boat pose. So just start to roll back all the way onto your sacrum. Find this balance here. And your hands can be out to the side eventually, but maybe just start with them right behind your knees. So we're just gonna start right here. Shins are parallel to the mat. And try to bring your heart up towards your knees so you're not here, you're here. And just hold for three breaths. Find the balance. This may be hard enough. If you want to take it up a notch for the last few breaths, you can maybe take your hands out to the side, enjoy that balance, and maybe you can gently start to straighten the legs. The heart is still reaching towards the knees. One deep breath. And then squeeze those knees in and roll right down onto your back. Give yourself a nice little massage. Rock from side to side, back and forth. Squeeze the knees into the chest. Really use this time to just relax and unwind the body. And as you do so, some serious thoughts might start to come swirling in. But ask those thoughts if you can gently just let them go knowing that if they're important enough, they'll be there for you after your practice. Gently let the feet come down flat on the mat, and we're gonna work the hips a little bit, nice and gently, of course. So bring that right heel over the left knee, and you can keep the left foot on the mat at first. You can take your right hand and gently just start to motion the right knee away from the body, this might be plenty for a lot of you. I know it's a lot for me on my right side hip here. So if this is enough, just stay right here. This is plenty. If you want to take it up another notch, maybe you can start to move the left foot off the mat, the left knee into the body, maybe even take the hands, wind it through the hole that you've created, and maybe hang on behind that left knee. Thread the needle or recline pigeon pose. This is a wonderful pose to get into your hips, but it's very helpful if you've already warmed the body with a moving practice. So seeing that we've done so, maybe you can go a few steps beyond your usual edge today. Of course, don't try to hurt yourself or jerk in any crazy motion, but just see where your edge is, especially in these poses and see if you can just go a step or two beyond. What does that feel like? And this is a time when emotions and feelings, frustrations and anxieties, maybe they're really coming on full force as we stretch this area of the body. But know that by really opening up these areas, Maybe we can start to let go of the things that we hold on to in our bodies, in our muscles, in our mind, in every single fiber of our being. Let it go. Use the breath to do so. A few more breaths, maybe tiny micro movements on this side, left knee in, right knee away. And then as you gently release it down, make sure that you're really careful with yourself as you just let the left leg go. And then take that right knee, squeeze it into your chest. You can extend the left leg long, grab it in, make sure you squeeze it, and then shake it out. Really feel like you're shaking the muscles away from the bones. You can go from side to side. Just release some of that energy that you've worked on. Whatever feels good. And then we'll start to set it up on the opposite side. So at first that right foot can be on the mat, left heel comes over the right knee, recline pigeon. And maybe this is enough. And just know that as we stretch the hips, 
usually one side is a lot tighter than the other. I know my left side right now always is tighter. So in most every one of my practices, I sometimes hold the left side for a little bit longer than the right, trying to even out the two sides of my body. This is enough for me right here to just have my right foot on the mat and just gently pushing my left knee away from the body. I already feel that. Now maybe that's my edge today. Maybe I want to try to take it one step beyond. So I'm still feeling it, but I'm taking that right foot off the mat, right knee into the body. And woo wee, I feel it now. How about you? <laughs> so just breathe deeply. Make sure that you're not holding tension in any areas that you're not even working on right now, like your head or your heart, even your tongue, your facial expressions. Let it all go. Let the back of your heart feel heavy on the mat, your shoulders not crunched all up here. Take a few deep breaths and really however many breaths on this side, even if you have to pause your recording right now, because knowing that one side you might really want to stay on for longer since you heated up the body through the moving practice, that's your choice. You can start to really understand and become aware of a home practice and what it can do for you. So just take it at your own pace. Believe that however many breaths you're supposed to do here is exactly what is meant to be. So hold however long you feel that you've evened out this side, at least for this practice, for this day. And then again on the release, do it nice and gently. Let the right leg just stretch out long. Bring that left knee into your chest. Feel the pull on the entire hip. You can circle it around. You can shake it out. Just let it go. Release that energy that you have worked so hard on today. Let it go. Feel like it's shaking all the way away from your toes. Nice. And then bring both knees back in. Squeeze it back in. And just realize if you've created a little bit more room in the hips. And just feel proud of yourself for that. Nice job. So we'll just do one more series on our back here. And if you happen to have a wonderful yoga strap that someone may have made you or anything, even a sock or a sweatshirt, anything that you can wrap around, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap that around our, our feet. And then we're just going to bring our feet straight up into the sky. This might be a lot for some people, and that's where the strap comes from. If you have a good amount of flexibility, you can actually take your two piece grip fingers around your toes and just hold your legs up like so. But if you're a little bit tight like me, you can take your strap and just hold here. And we're just going to really breathe deeply. Not a lot of action, but you really might be feeling it in the backs of the legs. And if you happen to be near a wall and you want to do even less work than what you're already doing because you're working your arms here, you're pulling down on the strap, you're working your legs, of course, you should be squeezing your core in so you're working your abs. If you want even less work but the same motion, you can scooch your bum all the way up against a wall and do legs up the wall pose, Viparita, Viparita Carini. So if you'd like that and anyone that does any sort of job or any activity when where they're on their feet all day and you really want to reverse the blood flow you can do crazy things that the yogis do like headstands and handstands and shoulder stands and we can get into all of that maybe in another class but for today just know that you're doing the same motion right here your feet are above your heart you're letting the blood flow in the opposite direction and if you happen to have a wall right behind your legs, you could just let your arms go out to the side, bring your legs up the wall, maybe even at an angle, scooch your bum a little bit away, and you could be right here if that's what works for you. And actually, you can stay here for however long you want. You could actually do a short or long meditation here, knowing how wonderful you're doing on your body, just 
laying on your back, relaxing, letting your feet come into the sky, reversing the blood flow, like I said, letting everything just move in the opposite direction. Whereas we're on our feet almost all day, every day. Just turn it all around. So for now, for purposes of this class, we'll let it go. Know that you can hold this for a lot longer in your home practice. You can play around with one leg on the mat, one leg up in the sky with a strap, and then you go to the opposite side. All these choices for you. But for now, we'll just take one more deep breath and then bring the knees back up into the chest. Let the strap go if you happen to have it in your hand. Squeeze it all the way in. Ah, and we'll just enjoy one last spinal twist on our way to our beautiful final rest, Shavasana. So squeeze the knees in. Let the arms part all the way out to the side. Snuggle your whole body, the back of your head, the back of your heart down. Take a deep breath with your knees at center, not moving, and then just gently let the twist come as you exhale, let the knees fall to the right and gaze to the left in the opposite direction. You can take your right hand to the top of your knees to accentuate the twist a little bit more. You can even extend the right leg down so the left knee can come even farther down, more intense twist. Wherever your practice is, just enjoy that your body is actually like one big, gigantic sponge being wrung out in one direction. And of course, we'll go and grab it in the opposite direction. So physically feel that process happening. Detoxification, cleansing, all these wonderful things. One more deep breath. Exhale, twist, and slowly, like the slowest you've moved through the whole class, bring those knees, use your core back up through center, and feel that good rush of energy coming back into your body. Squeeze it in, bring your arms back out to the side, deep breath, not moving. Exhale, twisting to the left, gazing to the right. Maybe coming down with hand on knee, a different variation, whatever works for you. Just knowing that you're physically wringing your body out one last time in the opposite direction. Enjoying every last squeeze, every drop, and everything that no longer serves you is melting away. And again, as slowly as you can possibly move so you can feel the benefits, feel the effects as you bring those knees back up into your chest. Unwind the body, feel all that goodness. And then curl yourself into the smallest ball, really squeeze it in, bring the back of your head, the back of your heart up, wrap both arms around both legs. Tell yourself that you did an amazing job and believe it. If you give yourself the love and encouragement, others will as well. Squeeze it all in and then all at once just start to let it go. Back of the heart leads, back of the head, back of the legs and the arms, the entire back body just melts into your mat, your sacred space. Maybe take a crystal or something sacred and put it over your heart, possibly even over your third eye, or maybe just another area that works for you, another chakra, whatever it is. Take deep inhales and exhales as you just release the entire body muscle by muscle cell by cell thought by thought let it go if 
you have any problems or issues trying to do this, maybe just take the back of your head that happens to be on the mat, pull all the thoughts that just won't leave you alone all the way in the back of the head so they feel so far away, and then just gently rock the head back and forth, side to side. And one thought at a time, one worry, one fear, whatever it is for you. You don't even need to know what it is. Just let it go. And when you feel complete and whole, so you can enjoy all the benefits of your practice, Find stillness and enjoy your rest. the body with a sweet inhale through the nose, maybe gently sigh it out through the lips, <sighs> know that you can stay on your back in Shavasana for however long works for you, if you'd like to start to move yourself up very slowly, First, working your way over to the right side in a fetal position, and in doing so, you release the pressure and the weight off of your ever-beating heart. Make sure to wiggle some fingers and some toes before you really just jerk movement back into the body. Move slowly, like you're waking up from the most delicious nap. And if you wish to journey with me for a few more minutes in a guided meditation, knowing that we hear the word meditate, meditation all the time, and I know for me and maybe for you, for years it was scary and foreign and something that I wanted to try but just didn't know how to get into. And now that I have just some of the tools, I'd like to share them with you. So you can gently, in your own time, start to make it up to a comfortable seated position. You can be done with the practice right now if that's what works for you. Or you can realize that the moving practice that we just went through actually came after the ancient yogis decided that it was really hard for them to sit in a seated meditation a knee would hurt, their heart would hurt, their mind would hurt, all these things, the human condition that we, we go through every day, they started to realize that if we, they would work it out in an activity, a moving practice, they could sit for longer, more peaceful periods of time. So let's try it. We all just move together. Let's try to find some stillness together. If you want to grab a stone, a crystal, anything you have, you know that I'm right there with you. I always have it in my hand. So whatever works, bringing the class full circle up in a seated position right where we started, 
maybe a bolster or a blanket to get those hips above your knees so you can feel really comfortable to sit for a longer period of time. And then you can take your hands, maybe crystal in hand or not, maybe you can put it down for just a minute, and a really nice thing to do is to bring your pointer finger and your thumb together down to your knees. You can have the crystals right underneath you if you wish. That actually connects the energy in your body, so instead of all this energy that we give away so easily every day to all those that we love, not necessarily in a bad way, just giving it away, giving it away. Let's bring it back to ourselves. Let's complete the practice that we've worked really hard on today. So thumb and pointer finger together. Spread the rest of your fingers out wide. Connect your energy. Keep it inside. And just gently start to close the eyes for a few more minutes together. And just by sitting here, Eyes closed, they could even be open, looking at a beautiful painting or a candle, anything at a soft gaze. But just know that by sitting here and breathing, you're doing it. You are meditating. Congratulations. Now how long, how many breaths can we stay here for? Maybe today it's just five or ten conscious breaths. Maybe tomorrow it's 30 or 40, and maybe the next day it's a half hour or an hour, and maybe the next day it's only two minutes. But you know what? If you sit down and you breathe, you're doing it. So let's do it together. Deep breath in just so you can sit up a little taller, feel a little prouder. And if again those thoughts just come swirling back in, let me just give you one more wonderful thing that has really helped me through my journey of yoga and meditation. And it's what we call a mantra or a mind protector, literally translated as that mind protector. So let's protect our mind with the hum sa mantra. Hum on the inhale, H-A-M, and sa gently on the exhale, S-A-H. And all it is, is the gentle and natural sound that your own breath makes on the inhale and the exhale. And it's said that if you can quiet the mind enough, let all the thoughts go. This is the sound that you would hear, the natural sound of your breath. Hum on the inhale, saw on the exhale. Gently to yourself, hum, saw, hum, saw. purposes of trying to keep this class to an hour which is always so hard to do there's so many wonderful things just know that again you could pause this right here and continue your meditation with the hamsa mantra or anything else that works for you know that you can sit for however long the body and the mind will allow because I know that time is very valuable, we'll bring our practice today to a wonderful, happy, healthy close by bringing our hands to our heart center. You can bring thumbs into sternum or just like the beginning, maybe palms down, whatever feels better for you. 
take a deep breath straight into your heart center. Bow your chin in and exhale, release and let go. Maybe in this moment you can remind yourself of your intention that you set for your practice. And maybe you can even take it a step further and remind yourself of something that you really love about yourself. Share it with your heart. Maybe even take a few minutes to find something that really means something to you, something that you just love about yourself. Take your time. Find what it is. Breathe it in with everything you have all the way to the tippy top of your breath. And on your exhale, let a little piece of you go out into our world. <sighs> and because I'm a little bit scared, but love the power of technology and that we are all interconnected through spirit and now through freeyoga.tv. I would like to take one more deep breath in together, a collective community breath together, all the way to the tippy top. And I'd like to send this breath, your breath, my breath, our breath, to wherever it's needed in our world today. <sighs> I see the light in each and every one of you, and I thank you from my heart to yours for sharing your practices and your energies with me. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'd like to say how much it means to me to practice yoga every single day in my own way, to be able to practice with those that I love, my students, my community, my family, and now to practice with uh, the world over. It means the absolute world to me. So for those of you that are with us today, please leave a love donation in the back basket. And for those of you that are with us from all over the world, there is a donate button that you can click and it means literally the world to us. You are what keeps us going. We would love to bring more yoga all over the world, free yoga, and it is up to you to keep that going and we'll keep on bringing it. So thank you for watching. I really do mean with all my heart. Namaste.